Hey yo, what up everybody? This is Zicky, and I'm about to break down the beat for Baller by Shook. My like it. So for the intro, I thought of starting with like a, a bar of just like kicks, right? And so I found this one sample called Jigga Stab, and it's legit just this much of a stab. And what I did with that was I, I just like quadrupled it and made it made it go over the whole bar. That way it sounds like this. And so what I did with that was I also added a a, a, a bass drum. Uh, that way it hits a little bit more. So the sub comes in with the stabs. That way it just comes in heavier. So that sounded pretty cool right off the bat. But, you know, I had to put my tag in there as well. So I just put the tag at the beginning and added kind of like, I wanted to go for like a static noise, um, like a white noise, but... Instead, I kind of just took a, a jail cell door closing. So that itself sounds like this. But I pitched it down by seven to make it sound like. So it sounds like that static white noise, you know, noise you would get out of a TV. Um, and so together with the tag and the stabs and the jail cell door, it sounds like this. My like it. And then. And that's when we started thinking of what the what the beat should sound like. Um, I usually uh, start with uh, the chords, so that's kind of what I did for this one too. I just kind of like I was thinking of an old school type of beat, um, you know, inspiring myself from like Fifty Cent, Dr. Dre, but more so like yeah, like you know, Dr. Dre uh, has this sound for Fifty Cent, so I kind of just went for the high keys and just very stabby and um quick notes uh, and chords most of my sounds are coming from you know omnisphere nexus helion sonic everything is usually in the box but because this, i wanted this to sound analogy and, and and just like raw gritty and not too clean i was like i'm gonna I'm just take the sound straight from the phantom g6 and like run an audio line into my um sound card so we could just get you know, just raw peaking sounds of piano and bass and strings, whatever I have in here. So I took the acoustic piano set and just like played the chords on it. Right. And I just recorded that into the software and it comes into. Um, and once I had like that chord structure, I just knew in my head what the whole beat is going to sound like. You know, I, I, I kept the chords uh the same for three bars and then change up the fourth bar into right just so it keeps moving um and right after that i added like a string to follow the same thing and then it goes back in so i had that and i decided to just add like a synth bass from um my phantom g6 here uh usually like i think in this record as well we have like 808s from the roland uh but for the most of the part of the song the synth bass from this phantom g6 just hit really hard um and it was just gritty so i just decided to put that in this and that kind of sounds like this together <laughs> Um, and then I proceeded to making the drums. So the melody hadn't come up yet because I was still thinking of what the melody should sound like. Um, one thing I noticed with a lot of hip hop beats that I don't really do a lot, but I, you know, I, I hope to do more is like consistency throughout the song, like that the melody just keeps going out through the song. So that's why I didn't start with the melody because I was like, I, I don't really know what the song sounds like yet. So once I knew. Uh, what the song sounds like, I was like, then I'll start making a melody. So what I did, I started adding some drums. Um, I just added some snare at first just to, you know, build something around um, something that stays consistent and nothing stays more consistent than a snare. So I started with the snare. Um, it's a pretty fat snare. It's called, I have a um, kit called the Dr. Dre, Dr. Dre Percussion Kit. 
And I just took, you know, all my drums from there and it was, you know, pretty much what I have now. So here's the snare. It kind of reminds me of the in the club uh, snares. Um, and then uh, right into that, I was like, let me add another snare to one accent, the first snare, and also like, uh, fo uh, like follow with another snare to kind of keep a groove. So that one, I'm like. So it's very just like it cuts through the mix. Um, and what I do next was I added kicks to the set. So I I usually like have one kick, but like just because I wanted this one to move more, I I had one kick that snaps, so it's like right on the beat. But the other kick kind of has a a tail to it, so you kind of hear like it just like it, it lasts a little longer. So you get a little bit of a snap and you get a kick that um, moves forward. So the snap kind of sounds like this. Very very high frequency to that, and the and then the um, other kick drum is more uh, bassy and just longer. Uh, one of the reasons I I did the uh, kick like that with the tail that long is because I have the freedom of not having the bass run like there's no 808 or sine bass going throughout the whole bar. It's pretty much just one kick, uh, one bass note. Mm, mm, mm. All that. Uh, space in the middle uh, with no bass just sounds a little empty so that kick kind of helps um, add a, a little uh, bass into it it's not too much but as much as there is after that I was like what do we do with hi-hats so for the meanwhile while this you know the beat is still like building up I just put like a backward hi-hat that on its own just sounds like this so I put that there just so it could keep some, like there's some hi-hat element in there, but not completely because I wanted to save that till later into the beat. Um, so that all together sounds like. I had to learn this the hard way too, that the smallest things make the biggest difference. I used to rinse hi-hats a lot, but I realized that you could use hi-hats at a more... Um, at a more fatter part in the song rather than just like having them throughout the whole song because they really just move the beat. They're so high end, they're so high in the frequency that they just move the beat. So I'd rather stick to them in a different part of the song. Um, and like usually in all my songs, I have like some sort of jingle, like bell sort of sound, sometimes kunguru, sometimes um, a tambourine. I think in this one is literally a jingle bell, like from a Christmas like percussion kit or something. And it just goes pretty well at the back. So that was pretty much the bulk of like what I knew the whole beat's gonna sound like. At least like the kicks and the snares, you could get the the, the groove that you want. And that's when like I, when I went further down into the song, I was thinking of hi hats. And all I really did with the hi hats was like keep it simple because the beat already is so simple. I didn't want to add too many trap hi hats and stuff like that. So I just kept uh, a hi hat just going on every uh, one eighth. <laughs> Um, and I've also, yeah, so there's also a shaker in here that kind of like, chick, 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 chick. so it's very light, but it's there and you can just like feel it more than hear it. So at this part of the song where I do have hi-hats, um, the whole kind of chord structure changes, um, because also with the song, he changes harmony to this. From the rest of the song, it's not the same melody. The rest of the song is the same melody going in again and again, except this melody. So I brought the hi-hats in here and I changed the chord structure. Instead of having strings and it ended up being just one hit and then it goes away for the whole bar, now I had consistent um, consistent chords on one fourth of the song. Then it goes back to here. Um, and the other, the only other thing, melody based that I added into the song was these strings right here. Um, one one thing I do like doing a lot in my songs is just having like transitions that are rather more musical than effects so instead of having a riser and stuff it's more just musical so this was a perfect one especially like someone i, I grew up listening to sakshinda shinda a lot and he used a lot of 
strings in his songs um leading up, like in Pangara songs as well so for me i was like this would be pretty cool cuz back in the day at least with punjabi music as well and hip hop music there's a lot of strings being used so instead of just having the one string uh, sound that i already had i decided to kind of put a transition there that sounded like this so you can hear it's all chopped up but the sick thing about music is like once you got other layers going with it you can't really hear the chop up so together it sounds like this so yeah so that was pretty much the melody part of it and the drum side of it and then it just came down to arrangement there were parts where um it sounded a little too empty without the bass so i just added another 808 to hit on like the off notes um uh, the uh, to hit off beat rather than like what we already had so that kind of went like this it's very subtle it's not something that you know you usually hear but it's just like it's something that keeps you moving especially in a setting that has a lot of bass like a a a, a party or, or or a car like it's something you don't like hear cuz if you're just hearing everything it's not that special anymore if it's right in your face so it's something that you can feel and that just adds on to the song i feel like um and then after that is just pretty much you know the 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 stuff that i like to do add symbols um add gunshots add um ad libs and all that kind of any anything that like will take my song more into like a story mode than rather just a loop this line over here he talks about a car sp- uh speeding at 40 and he's listening to a record of his own um and instead of me putting a melody in front of it because it's a like a low gap i just added a car engine revving which one like Louis. and so with everything it just it sounds like this Louis. right and that's in there and in the final there's some scratches um that i had just done on my sz over here uh when we were doing the master so that these kind of little things at really add up to what the song is like a couple of risers here and there um one thing i did new in this record that i started doing recently is reversing the sub instead of like so we already have the 808 just going like mm. so instead of just that like it's uh i reversed it so that way when you're going into like an, and it's very small as you can see on the screen here um it's just one and a half beat right and that really like is unnoticeable but when you go into the next part of the song it's like it just feels really good i feel like hopefully you could tell through this recording like that whole part just being silent you just hear i feel like it just brings energy into the song um and over here like you know just added a bunch of uh rowdy stuff <laughs> uh what's this i think a gunshot right here I try to not to go overboard with like how loud it is cuz we're not making a mixtape or um uh, or like you know we're not making like a remix it is still a song and a lot of the times the artists don't understand with songs like this is like uh, in Punjabi music they add a lot of gunshot effects and uh, like throughout the whole song but that eliminates kind of like more of your chances of getting on the radio and stuff like you know a lot of the songs that we do It's say like, I'll send a clean version if it needs to be as chauffeur was but like this song baller there's no like clean version to it cuz it's all clean anyways but like the gunshots and stuff like they'll still ask us to take them out you know so instead like don't really have them in there anyways but I think this song is just like we got we got we got away with it we got away with these cuz they were so light in the mix that's the that's the biggest difference instead of being like on the drop like we we're using this gunshot as a crash i just use it as a little accent that you can't hear right like the gun cock here just very simple you hear the gunshot so it's not something you hear like that that bass is going ten 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 you just and like it's just there like because the gun was cocked it has to shoot right so <laughs> like phys- physics wise i was trying to make sense out of it you know uh but that's kind of like what i really like to do at this point of the beat is just like spice it up a little bit more as much as i can um and then arrangement wise honestly this was something that uh showbody had so i just kind of like went along with the arrangement that he he already gave me and built around that that's when i did the final step which is the melody once the whole song was done the melody was probably 
the toughest part of this song. It was, you know, because it was just like, I didn't want to ruin this. I didn't want to go over his vocals, but I also didn't want it to be like a dull melody. It just had such an upbeat vibe to it. So I started with the piano again. Um, and I, while I was fidgeting around, I just thought of this melody. Like I just kept recording something. Um, as you can see, I just looped. Uh, if you can see on the screen, I just looped this, but if I open up the whole thing, it's just a bunch of uh, different recordings, right? So once I got to this melody, I stuck with it. So it starts with the octave lower and then it goes higher. So that just loops throughout the whole song, even while... That's one thing that never stops. And all I did was add like... It's called the 50 beep too, I think. It's one of the sounds from his records. And that just like, once I put that on top of the piano, it made the song for me for sure. Uh, that made the song for me, but as soon as Ames mixed the song, he put uh, the guitar, the 50 beep, and, and the piano pretty much on the same level, and he created his whole own sound with it pretty much. And the way it sticks out in the mix is just like I didn't I didn't imagine for the melody to be that strong, but it ended up being probably one of the more special parts in the song for sure. Um, you know, so that all in the starting sounds like um, one thing I'd say the only thing I admit I had I have missed in the song is. Um, the rara rapa, the the ad libs I have, um, I was not gonna put them in the song, but it was, the song is way too rowdy for me not to do that. All my like records that are cold and just like ruthless, like they have this in there, and it adds a it, it adds a sort of a element that's just like for at least uh, Punjabi people, like those shouts are very much more important. That's all we do at hall parties and stuff like that. So, um, you know, that I think this really pushed the song. I had a, I have like a delay on this that only comes in once, um, like strongly. So wh when, when the audio plays, the delay comes and it just disappears. It sounds perfect when you're listening to the song. Right? So it just happens once more times and then it's got a long till. We'll hear that one more time. Right. And that that like bardic is pretty much throughout the whole song. The only other thing I added was like um, like a New York uh, or Jamaican, you could say, kind of like just ad lib of just like uh, mouth shooting. <laughs> I'll call it mouth shooting. But that was that like that really I think stuff like that makes me stand out because it's just subtle. But it's things that we know, like we grew up on in hindsight like things that we didn't think of that hype us up you know um and that that's pretty much the song what i really wanted to make sure i did with the song was hype people up and like instead of being in like a really uh clean beat that i usually have i, I thought of like you know going down into the audio lines and uh forgetting about uh quantizing and stuff like that because all these audio uh recordings they're not quantized they're all just recorded as it is so my hand you know, for the synth bass is not exactly on the same uh, coordination as the piano or the piano is not on the same coordination as the, the string. So that just gives you this uh, groove that you wouldn't um, achieve if you're, uh, what's it called? You wouldn't achieve if you're quantizing everything. I look up to a lot of producers nowadays like um, Wheezy uh, that he like he'll take his 808s. Like once he's done making his 808 line, he'll just push it up a couple of milliseconds and that's why you get that groove of like something's off but it sounds good you know um so that because of that i was like i think it's worth the shot at this point in my career to kind of like experiment with like non-quantization and just kind of doing something by hand instead of uh just doing everything in the box so i think that really like changed my sound for sure for the rest of my life as well now that i know i could do this um, and just overall, I had a really fun time making this song, and um, it's a special song for us this year. So um, I hope this taught you something. Uh, that is Baller. This is Zicky. And that was our heat breaker. How <laughs>